Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to the full moon in Virgo. It is nice to have everybody here. I'm so excited. Um, I had a lot of fun putting this one together. This whole Pisces season is just so great. And then I actually have some personal prominent planets in the sign of Virgo. And I tried to really hone in on that energy. So I love how aesthetically beautiful the PowerPoint came out. I love the messages that came through. So I am really, really looking forward to going on this journey with you today. It is the full moon in Virgo at 27 degrees, 40 minutes. Um, the moon will occur on March 17th of 2022 at 9.17 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And as a reminder, I will be posting all of these live to YouTube the day before the moon occurs. So in this case, that will be March 16th. And the only way to get the info ahead of time, so that way you know what to expect, you can begin to prepare, you can um, kind of find a way to tone in a little bit more and tune in and, uh, with the energies as they start to build and then become to their apex and then wane off. Um, again, you do not have to be live with me during this event. As long as you are registered on Crowdcast, you can watch this event as many times as you need to between now and when I post it on, live on YouTube. So another thing is if you have not used Crowdcast in the past in my link tree, which for those that are watching on YouTube will be at the description box below. For those of you watching with me on Crowdcast, you can find that at the end with the QR code. That is um, where you're gonna find a how to use Crowdcast. It's got videos, it's got step-by-step -step instructions, and it's all designed to benefit you, the watchers of Crowdcast events. So one last reminder, the date and time for this is going to be, all dates and times that I'm gonna be showing here are for um, the islands of Hawaii. So make sure to do the adjustments for your time zone. So as you get your natal charts and notebooks ready, here is what we are going to review. Remember I said Virgo, checklist, we got all the things happening. It's like we need to have a little, a little checklist here. Um, we'll be first going over the aspects of the moon. I'm kind of going in a little reverse order than I normally do and that is by design because there's some really prominent patterns that you need to kind of know and visualize and see in order to talk about the liftoff, which is going to come up after we look at the chart of the moon, and then we'll end with a little connection quote, um, and then that will be our event. So let's go ahead and get started. The biggest aspects with this moon are two different patterns, and they are a grand, a grand trine in the element of earth and a kite. So for those that don't know a lot about aspect patterns, essentially they're patterns that are created within a chart when three or more planets are involved. And there's many, many different kinds. You have T-squares, you have yods, you have mystic rectangles, obviously a grand trine, a kite is one as well. There are more than that, but those are just some to name a few. And a trine is when three planets create a triangle in the chart in one elemental sign. And in this case, for this moon, it is in the sign of Earth, or it, the sign, excuse me, the element of Earth. And a kite then is where you have the grand trine, but then two sextiles come off of that into one additional planetary point or, um, you know, either a planet or um, an aspect itself or a point itself. So that could be a luminary, that could be an asteroid, that could be another moon. So any planets or points can create these patterns and configurations within a chart. And I do have on the next slide what exactly that looks like so that way you can actually visually see what the grand trine and a kite looks like. So the grand trine for this is with the moon being in Virgo, Pluto being in Capricorn, and the north node being in Taurus. The kite connects the sun with Neptune, um, 
loosely. Neptune and the sun are are pretty close. Um, depending upon the orbs you work with, they could you could be considering them conjunct. Some people work with closer orbs, so they wouldn't consider them conjunct. But Neptune's energy is present for sure in this um, in this configuration. But the kite does connect to the sun, so the sun goes um, in a sextile to Pluto, as well as to the North Node, and kites often come in when a trine alone isn't going to give you the necessary push or the necessary lift that you need, like a kite will to get off the ground. So when the moon's involved, the moon moves very, very fast. Um, It moves a couple of degrees. It moves a degree every two hours. So the moon, even though this trine hits at an exact point, it's going to be over very quickly. That energy is going to dissipate and wane very quickly. And so the kite ends up being here and the sun ends up being here and being this anchoring point for you that allows you to utilize the trine and the kite to stimulate activity, to lift off, to get that lift that you do when you go fly a kite or if you've ever if you've never flown a kite, you um, may want to look at somebody who has like a YouTube video or even I as I was putting this together, all I could hear in my head was Mary Poppins. So that's a great movie to watch to see about flying a kite. It's this like initial when the wind catches and whoosh, it like lifts off. And that's really what the sun is supporting here in this kite formation. And it allows you to see. And seeing is a very key word with this moon. The sun is challenging you to see what is possible. It's an illuminator. It illuminates things for you. And with it being the sun, being that focal point, it's allowing you the necessary light, the necessary energy to see what is in front of you and what is possible. We are still in the midst of a Piscean whirlpool as well. That's where your stelliums come in from. We have a stellium in Pisces as well as an Aquarius. And I did talk about the Piscean whirlpool, not only in the new moon in Pisces, which is available now to watch. That happened um, a couple of weeks ago and then, well, a week or so ago. And then also in the March overview as well. There... The two stelliums um, is really providing us with stability and structure to allow that those Piscean areas of our life to transform us to the next level. And wherever Pisces is at within your natal chart, those can be some of those themes that may be up for this transformation for you, that may be being illuminated to see what is needed. As we go to the chart of the moon, so this is where um, in these white lines you can see this beautiful aspect pattern with the grand trine, um, which is the triangle, and then the two sextiles which come together at the point of the sun. So speaking of your natal chart, if you have that handy now, it is a great time to look and see where you have both Piscean energy, which is going to be this sign right here. You can see we have Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, and the sun in Pisces, which creates that stellium. And then we have the moon over here in Virgo, which this is the sign of Virgo right here. And you're going to want to look and see what two houses are illuminating. So full moons always highlight two points in your chart. In this case, it is Pisces and Virgo, and you want to find where you have 24 to 27 degrees of Virgo. That's the orb that I'm going to be working with just because of the different energy signatures present here. Um, You know, you've got the North Node at 2358, which for all intensive purposes, 24. Um, And then you also have Pluto here at 2810. So Providing that orb covers every part of where this grand trine in Earth and how this 
um, kite is affecting in the chart. So you want to look for 24 to 27 degrees of Virgo and see if there are any planets and points that will be working with you during this moon. If so, you're probably going to be working with this energy even more so than somebody that doesn't have any points or planets in that house. Um, if you do, this is where you'll be asked to restructure your daily tasks, look at your priorities and what um, priorities you need to go forward with, look at your habits, and those could all be structured around the themes of the house that it is in. Um, and then this is all gearing you towards what you are doing next. So the other thing that I wanted to highlight is this stellium that we also have in Aquarius. So this is the sign of Aquarius right here. And as you can see, we have Mars, Venus, and Saturn all in another stellium in Aquarius. So to highlight this um, Aquarius stellium, this is how you're showing up. This is how you're connecting with what is needed to transform, which is where Pluto comes into all of this, and how you do that unified between Mars and um, Venus, how you do that as a unified front with your dreams and your goals. How do you show up? How do you connect with how you transform? How do you create that unity as we get towards Saturn um, and show up to your change, because that's what Saturn's going to be asking, especially as we get through March with um, first Venus meeting up with Saturn and then Mars meeting up with Saturn. You have to get through Saturn. You have to get through the restrictions, the responsibilities, the structure that's needed. You have to show up for yourself and for this change. Which, quite frankly, with the energy present, this is not new news for you. This, in fact, is not something that you are you may feel forced to change, which sometimes, you know, take forced for the light, not a, not a strong, like, triggering word, but just meaning, hey, things have to change. You don't have a choice anymore. Um, this is that change that you know, you've been already uh, aware of, already have an understanding about what is coming up for you next. And you know what you're doing now isn't going to necessarily get you to that next space. Um, and that's where, again, this Piscean stellium and this energy of this Piscean whirlpool with Virgo coming to that head is allowing you to see what is needed in those daily earthly tasks, habits, and energy um, to bring this new, you know, this new event forward, to bring and transform into who you need to be in order to bring those goals forward. So I was actually guided to talk about the idea of flying a kite, which I had mentioned a little bit earlier, and this is where the liftoff comes in. Um, and it's really this lift off to the next stage of evolution. Kind of talked about that in the last slide. We are constantly evolving. That's like end of story, every day you wake up and you're evolved in some way. You are different than the way that you were yesterday. And I know personally, I have um, struggled and continue to evolve in my notion and understanding about when I'm triggered by words or things that want me to expand, um, statements or moons for this example, energy signatures that make me want to expand. And when I get triggered by that, I am continuing to evolve out of this idea that it is the worst, the hugest, the most far-fetched thing that you could possibly imagine. My brain immediately goes there. And what I mean by that is when I hear a word like evolve, my brain wants to go, oh shit, 
that is literally going to mean that I am going to have to reinvent myself again. Everybody hide. I got to change my hair. I got to throw away all my clothes. I have to completely change life situations. The people that I know now aren't going to be the people that I know tomorrow. And oh my God, the whole world is going to change. Welcome to a little glimpse inside of my brain. That, um, that's not reality. And I know that. Logically, I know that. But, um, you know, yes, I know that there are major life changes that happen where some of those things could be true. And they do occur. However, logically, I also know that evolution we do every day. And it is a continual basis that we do these very small, minute evolutionary changes that end up getting us from where we are today to where we want to be tomorrow, three months from now, five years from now. And the small spaces of our daily routines, our daily habits, how we speak to ourselves, how we engage with our intuition, how we honor and respect the life that we have, how we have gratitude, those small things journaling, um, meditation practices, um, childlike wonder of just going out and flying a kite, right? Having fun, being in states of bliss and joy, going to water and cleansing. These small, tiny, minute things, this is where evolution occurs. This is what this full moon in Virgo is talking about. And it's really highlighting this for us because it's going to be incredibly important that we look at those small changes, those small spaces, so that way we can get to the months ahead. From the time that this moon occurs, we are literally days away from Austera. We're literally days away from the Western Astrological New Year, where the zodiac starts over and the sun enters Aries. So the sun will move into Aries and that is a transformation in its own right. That is an evolutionary um space in its own right. Yes, it happens every year, but every year is different than the year before. And while we will very much still have incredibly strong Pisces energy until April, the wheel is turning. The seasons are changing. Um, Transformation is absolutely happening. We are absolutely evolving. And this moon is so pivotal in, and is asking us to, you know, how are we transforming for ourselves in the small spaces to gain liftoff into this next Zodiac New Year? I'm going to repeat that because I think it's really, really important that it's not this big grandiose picture as my brain likes to think it is. The moon is pivotal in asking us how we are transforming for ourselves, evolving for ourselves, and in the small spaces to gain liftoff into this next Zodiac New Year. Virgo energy in itself is very much about wholeness. It's how you can take that wholeness and become the architect of your world. It's an inner standing that you are complete, 100% in this moment. You don't need to be fixed. You don't need to be changed. Um, And how you refine the things around you, your ideas, your thoughts, it is ruled by Mercury. Um, And then become that architect of your world and allow who you are to propel you into the next stages of who you are becoming. It is connected with the Hermit card in the Tarot deck. And the Hermit really signifies this light within. It's 
using your divine being as a guide versus exterior motives and persuasion. So not allowing others to tell you where to go, um, but using your own intuition to guide you where to go. It's really sovereignty within yourself. That is the energy of the hermit. It's wisdom and it's the period of, you know, when you pull the hermit into row. Whoa, excuse me. When you pull um, the hermit into row, it can sometimes signify a personal growth and exploration, this time of opening up into your wisdom. So the moon is giving us the support in that trine to see where we are transforming for others, to see how others, society, your culture say that you need to transform and where we're buying into that and very clearly showing you that that is not, that is not what is needed. In order to go admit that, in order to change that narrative, in order to come back to yourself, you really have to be okay with who you are now. Now, that absolutely does not mean that you don't want to change or don't want to become the best version of yourself. All of that is absolute and wonderful and great. You should. You should always want to continue to grow and develop. But you can't get there without being whole in this moment. You have to understand what your next want is, what your next dream is, and then how you will need to change in order to get that. It's all the journey. It's all the journey. It's not a destination. It's not a perfect It's that continual growth and evolving, but understanding that where you're at today is part of that process, is part of getting you to the next stage. And if it weren't for this moment and honoring who you are and being whole with who you are in this moment, you're not going to be able to get to the next. And again, remember that sun can be highlighting these spaces where you're not growing for yourself or in alignment with yourself. Instead, you might be growing in alignment with what other people want you to be. And that's not, it's not where we're at. We need to be whole within ourself and use our intuition and grow within ourself. When the moon connects, in this trine and again I said like the moon moves very fast so it's going to be this like connection and I I just continue to hear um like the most beautiful tone like like a triangle like the triangle in um in music where it just hit so perfectly it had this beautiful tone of harmony And when that happens, it's really clearing the way for that cleansing that we talked about in the Pisces new moon in March. So um, for those of you that have ever worked with tones, you know that the energy of certain tones can really clear and transform negative energy. That's what this trine really honed in on for me is is that you're going to hear it. It's going to be this beautiful tonal point coming out, clearing that energy space and um, allowing us to see really what little adjustments need to be made on a daily basis and start to make that evolution happen. And that is the full moon in Virgo. To quote Socrates, to know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. And in a moment of connection, I wanted to end with a quote by Sir Winston Churchill, who is actually a late degree Virgo rising and who also, totally getting goosebumps, who also has a grand trine in fire and a kite in his own natal chart. Kites rise highest against the wind, not with it. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Remember to follow my Crowdcast page, register for upcoming events, and share that info out to your network. That is how you can get um, all of this information ahead of time. And then again, it will be posted on YouTube the day before the moon occurs. The QR code here is where you can access all things Habitual Sages, including the how-to for new users to Crowdcast. And as a reminder, yes, it happened. As a reminder, there is only one Habitual Sages on social media, and that is Habitual Sages, all one word, no numbers, no um, periods, dots, underscores, nothing like that. So please make sure that you are protecting yourself and reporting false accounts for people who create those and solicit readings. Um, That is not the energy that we put out. That is not what I would do. So make sure that you're protecting yourself. Make sure that you are aware that there are scammers out there. And um, just know everything for me is habitual sages. I would also love for you to join me on Patreon. That is where I do a weekly astrology review with some tarot and some other Patreon exclusive content that allows you to stay connected to what's really happening throughout the month um, in regards to astrology. So we do astrology all month long over on Patreon. I'd really love to see you there. And there are a few different shirt and tote designs available now on my bonfire store. Um, Check them out via the QR code and make sure to tag hashtag habitual sages in your gear on the socials. All right, mahalo. See everybody next time. Bye.